Hi, I'm Victoria Pearson, but you can call me V. And I did mention last week that I was going to talk to you a little bit about my writing process. I'm going to do that today. I haven't planned this video out very well, so we are once again chaos vlogging. Now, I think I mentioned in person in my last video that I have just come to the end of a massive, massive project that I've been working on for a really, really long time. I can't actually tell you too much about what the story is about because I am hoping to submit this for traditional publishers to consider and so I need to be a little bit cagey about what it's about but I thought you might be interested in the process of writing a book and so I thought I'd go through mine with you. Bear in mind of course that everybody's process is different. If you are writing a book and you're doing it differently to me, your way is still okay. And if you are looking to start writing a book and everything I say makes you feel really daunted. It's okay, you don't have to do it this way. This is just what works for me. So, um, you may know that I already self-publish a lot of my short stories, poetry, things like that into little collections. And so I had an idea of what it was like to finish a project, but this is the first novel that I have finished and decided is good enough to be submitted to other people. This is not the first novel I've ever written. I feel like I had to get through maybe five really crappy novels before I found the right one inside me. So I released a while ago a standalone short story, longish short story, it's not quite long enough to be classed as a novella I don't think but it's close, um, and that was called A Tale of Two Princes. It was a modern retelling of Sleeping Beauty and the Frog Prince and it was set inside a sci-fi type hospital where you had vampires, aliens, werewolves, imps, um, magical creatures of all different kinds that were being kept in this hospital to keep them safe from the outside world and to keep them secret from the outside world. I strongly recommend that you go and read it obviously because I wrote it and so I love it. But there was a character in there who only sort of popped in in passing. His name was Malcolm, he is a teenage werefox and he's quite pivotal to that story um, but I didn't really develop him very much. I decided that I wanted to write Malcolm's backstory and I did think it was going to end up as a short story but the more I wrote the more I realised there was a lot of material there and it would probably make a really good coming of age young adult type book. So I started to plan that out. For me the planning process takes a really long time and a lot of it happens subconsciously. So um, I will have this idea that I've got Malcolm the Werefox, I want to tell his backstory, I want to tell how he became a werefox. And I will sit with that idea for a good few months, maybe not even actively thinking about it a lot of that time. I have a special note in my phone that is especially for that sort of thing, where I can jot down snatches of dialogue that are happening in my head, little facts about the character, what's his favourite thing, does he like this type of food, who's his best friend, and gradually over time that builds up. I do a lot of that with my walking in the woods. I did mention walking in the woods last week. I did a long long video about walking in the woods and that is definitely a really important part of my writing process because there's something very meditative about walking and that one foot after the other don't really have to think about it. Your subconscious can go off and sort all these things out. Being in the woods as well is really helpful to me because the setting of my story is mostly in the woods and so it was helpful for me to really immerse myself in that atmosphere. That's obviously a bit more difficult if your story is set on say a spaceship or something like that but I still think that walking can help disengage your conscious brain so that your subconscious brain can get on with sorting out the knotty little parts of your story. Once I had decided pretty much I had a good handle on this character, I had a good handle on um, their best friend and the antagonist of the story, I then started to make a plan, jot things down. I won't go too massively into what I do there because I did a whole video on that called um, What the Heck is Preptober, where I was talking about how I plan out a story using post-it notes. So and I have like, this has to happen, this has to happen, I know I need some things to happen in between, so we'll leave a gap on the board between these two post-it notes, and then I will stick more post-it notes in the middle of what needs to happen in between there, and I might decide to move some of the events around, and eventually I will have a big board covered in post-it notes that has all of the main plot line of the story, all the little bits of 
character development if I'm doing say a mystery story I might have my red herring clues in there and where my real clues come into it and it all looks story shaped then I do NaNoWriMo again did a whole video on NaNoWriMo but what it basically is is when writers all around the world decide in the month of November we're going to try and write 50,000 words and that comes out to just under 2,000 words a day so it's doable but it's challenging and at the end of that you do not have a finished draft you have a filthy dirty draft that is full of mistakes and bits that don't make sense and an ending that's unsatisfying because you were rushing to finish it before the end of November and all that sort of thing but you've got something there something that you can edit and the next stage of that is to do nothing at all, just leave it aside. And the reason that I do that is because if I leave it for three to six months, when I come back to read it, I don't remember it. And so it's like I'm reading it fresh all over again. In my particular case, with this particular project, what happens is you read it through, you edit away. By the end of it, you get sick of it. So you put it away for three months again. Then you pick it up and you start editing from the beginning again. And before you know it, you've got a story with a really, really strong beginning and then a crappy unsatisfying ending. That's what happened to me. But I needed to get outside my head and get some outside perspectives on that at that point. So at that stage, I sent it out to a few people that I could trust to not be too nice about it. I knew that they would be nice. You know, they're not going to be horrible, but people that understand that criticism is actually helpful and just saying, oh yeah, that's brilliant, isn't always the most helpful thing. I got feedback that I was expecting. My ending was unsatisfying. For some reason, in the panic of November writing, I decided that I could just take my big bad down off screen um, by somebody else that wasn't my hero. That doesn't work, right? That's not satisfying at all. So once I realized that that was the problem, I gave it another three to six months of not really talking about it very much and thinking about it very much while I let my subconscious deal with how we were going to do that. And I'd written myself into a bit of a corner, to be honest, because my big bad was really big and really bad. And my hero was still quite small and weak. And I had to write a way to fix that. And that meant going back to the middle parts and, and seeding some things in for later. I think that made it a much, much stronger story all round. Once I'd done that and then sent it out to some more people who were much more satisfied by the ending. These were people that hadn't read the first one, so they didn't know what to expect. And they went through doing things for me like um, proofreading, spotting invisible commas, that sort of thing, because I can do that sort of thing, but I, f I find it difficult to edit my own work. Seeing other people's errant commas is so much easier than seeing your own. Now we have finally got all that bit done. We finally got all that bit done. It's with a final first reader who I'm hoping isn't going to point at anything major that needs to be done. And now I have to start the query process. Let me tell you, that's terrifying. I am very, very scared of starting the query process because I get choice paralysis. I'm on Query Tracker at the moment. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but um, it lists agents, publishers, editors, things like that, what their specialities are, what they're looking for. And you can create a shortlist from there um, so that you can apply to various different people. I'm at the stage now of trying to make my shortlist and I feel like I'm in a supermarket mega store in front of a wall of shampoo and I'm going, does my hair need creatine or does it need fruit or does it need plant extracts or herbs? I don't know. Um, and so this stage might take a little while for me. I might even have to involve some other people to help me out with the research process. But maybe in a few months time, I'll give you another update and show you how the traditional querying process works because it's very new to me and I am kind of jumping in on the deep end with it. I thought you guys might want to meet my little colleague here. He is an invaluable part of my writing process because um, he gives me a chance to talk out all of my ideas with people, run dialogue with somebody who is not going to stick their own ideas in, are you? No. And it gives me a great excuse to walk in the woods as well, which is a massively helpful part of my writing process. He is, as you can see, not the happiest about being on camera, but he does love a snuggle. He's a boy. He's Everybody should have an animal to talk through their writing with. Anyway, 
you can join me next week next monday at 6 a.m uk time i'm probably going to do one of those what i eat in a day vlogs um because well various different reasons that i'll explain next week but also because i haven't actually thought up any ideas like i said it's may at the moment and there have been a ton of bank holidays in may and it's completely messed up all of my usual scheduling and i don't know what i'm doing um, so for that reason it would be really helpful if you guys would comment and let me know what kind of videos that you like seeing from me because I might find that quite useful <laughs> um, uh, like at the moment I'm kind of last minute in my videos um, and doing whatever comes off my head and I think it does come across that this is very off the cuff I'm sorry about that I did promise you a talk about my writing process and that's it it is as chaotic and haphazard as i am and involves a lot of procrastination i tell myself that's part of the artistic process rather than just me procrastinating and i don't know i believe myself what do you reckon do you believe me anyway i will be here every day as usual in your shorts doing my daily gratitude i like to take a great big deep breath to start my day off right i would love for you to join me with for that and start your day off in the right sort of frame of mind um, I was in a really foul mood the other day, I did my video and it did make me feel a lot, lot better. So I warmly invite you to join me for that. And also on a Tuesday, I check in with my terrarium, Dave, assuming that I haven't killed him yet. I have just given him a big hard prune and I'm a little bit worried about how he's going to cope with that. But we'll find out, I guess. So I will see you every day up until next week when I will be doing my what I eat in a day. Um, and you have yourself a magical week.